so many tr troubles you've turned around, so many messes you've turned into messages, so many tombs of destruction you've turned into wombs of new birth, so many things that you've done, you're so miraculous, you're so gracious, you're so powerful. There is none like you, none beside you, none that rival you. There is, there is no one that is like you. You are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You're the first and you're the last. Father, we honor you and we thank you. Lord, when I think back on my own life and, and I, I, I see where I am because of your grace, it's only by grace that I stand in your presence. And Lord, I pray. Lord, as we begin to endeavor to move and to break the scrolls, move into this next portion of service together, I pray, Holy Ghost, you would have your way. Be loosed in this house, up and down every aisle, in every seat, be loosed. Every chain, let it be loosed. Every fetter, let it be broken. Every yoke, let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the ears would open that revelation would come. Father, move by your spirit, even past our intellect and into our spirit, Father. We thank you and we praise you for this Kairos moment that we have stepped into. In Jesus' I'm, I'm, mighty listen, name I'm, we I'm pray. Someone give him a hand clap. To it. You have to understand the value of this moment that we have here together in this conference. Each one of the pastors that are here whom I admire, love, and respect, each one of them have families at home. Each one of them have amazing ministries back in the U.S. Each one of them have made sacrifice to be here with your man of God and to be with you to reveal and to share the assignment that has been given in this hour. Amen. You must know that you are on purpose and on assignment. This is not an accident. This is a Kairos moment for your life. A Kairos moment is a divine marker in time which God has predestined for you to walk into. We measure time by chronos. God measures time by kairos. When kairos and chronos meet, that's when there's a prophetic destiny being revealed. That's what this is now. This is kairos and chronos kissing over your life. That's what we're in right now. The theme of conference this year, behold, I do a new thing. I want to, I wanna, if I could, just for a few moments, I want to talk to you about preparing yourself to be a part of the new thing. Because there are many things that God is doing in the earth, but few are participating in what God is doing. Let, let, let's just read this. Uh, 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 passage here. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 through 20. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 through 20. I'm going to get back to it in a minute. Let me just continue to expound, if, if, if I may, concerning the idea of Kairos. Not only are there Kairos times in our journey in life, there are Kairos men and Kairos women. It often requires a Kairos man or woman to enter into a Kairos moment in time. Whenever God does something, it's always through a man or a woman of God. And often, when I come to this house, this house is a Kairos house for me personally. Your prophet is a Kairos man. He operates not in his own time, but on the timeline of eternity. 
Amen. <laughs> Prophet, I remember the first time I came here four years ago. Stage was totally different. Red carpet, carpet on the stage. We were all wearing suit and tie back then. You guys remember those days? I mean, I still got a couple suits in the closet. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> uh, I remember the first time I came here, Prophet, you didn't know me from Adam. It was a Kairos moment that I stepped into. I remember sitting right there, right where these brothers are. And we were singing, Jenny was singing the song, I Can Only Imagine. I can only imagine. She began, she began singing that song, and, I, and, and my knees began to get weak. And Prophet, I began to cry. And, and I mean, one of those ugly praises. Snot coming down my nose. And, and, and it was a pool of, 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 of mucus that had come out from my nostrils that was pouring down into my hand. And, and I got up and it was like, one of and I, and I pulled my head up. And, and it was like, and it, it fell. I, I remember being completely, I felt like Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6, completely undone in the presence of the Lord. He had not known me. Uh, and, and, if, and for those of you that aren't too familiar with the churchianity and the culture and, and, and the, um, the, the, the politics of piety, you're not supposed to cry if you're a pastor. You're not, pastors hardly worship in public. That's, that's, what, that's what it's supposed, you know, that, that, that's the old order. And can I tell you, I could not help myself. I, I, I was undone. You know why? Because this house in my life had become a Kairos moment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oftentimes, when God does something, the marker is already set in eternity. It's already, there, there's, the, Jesus spoke about prepared place that he has. Many mansions, many, many moments of eternity that would come down and step into finite. They, 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 they could be known as thin places. A thin place, simply stated, is a sheer veil between this experience and eternity. And often when God will hover around a man or woman, God will hover around the house and God will create thin places. Where's your thin place? This house is your thin place. Amen. Jacob experienced a thin place where he met with God and he was able to tap into what God had for him, and he was able to prophetically step into a new realm or another phase of his destiny. That's what this house is. That's what this conference is. That's what your pastor is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oftentimes, even in Scripture, we see that it's the times that make the man. Not the man that makes the times. We see Goliath rising up and we mistakenly say that David came to slay Goliath. But really, in fact, it was Goliath that came to exalt David. We find Esther in the palace. Mordecai asked her a question. There was tremendous persecution upon her people. There was possibly death to the entire race. Mordecai says, could it be that you were here for such a time as this? It was the time that made Esther. It was the time that made Moses. 
the years for, of their captivity were over. So Moses steps on the scene to be a deliverer. It wasn't that Moses was such a great deliverer. It was that Moses was in the time of deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were able to prophetically understand the times and the seasons. There was a tribe in Israel. They were called, they, they were the tribe of the sons of Issachar. They were known for their discernment, being able to understand the times and the seasons. Can I ask you a profound theological and personal question simultaneously? What time is it? What time is it in your life? What time is it in your destiny? What time is it? Because God can be moving and you can be missing it. What time is it? Can I tell you that God often comes in ways we unexpect? Behold, I do another thing. It's a new thing. And, 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 and I want to unpack this a little bit. What happens is we focus on the thing rather than who brought it. We focus on the what instead of the who. Our expectation is on the system rather than the principle. And what happens is there will be a move of God that was God breathed in a Kairos moment, but because man does not understand how to keep his spiritual eyes open, prophet. Last night he talked about keeping your eyes open. Because man cannot keep their eyes open, we turn moves of God and we, we set up monuments from those movements. And what was once alive now becomes dead religion. We turn a movement. Into a monument. And the monument becomes dead. But God's intention for the new thing was never for it to be the only thing. But because we are so used to routine, because we are so used to the things that we're comfortable with, we take movements and we move them into monuments. We set up towers where God only intended us for pull out to pull out tents. We build homes where God only wanted us to camp. They moved, the children of Israel, they moved with the cloud by day and the fire by night. They were anticipating the movement of God. Our religion turns the movement and the power of God to non effect. Mark chapter 7, verse 13, making the word of God of non effect through our traditions. God does not want a people that are traditionalists, He wants a people that are transitionalists. Always on the move. Always. Behold, I do a new thing. What does he say? Shall you not know it? What are you looking at? Where is your focus? Is your focus on his hand or on his voice? What are you watching? You can easily, through routine, quench and silence the move of God in your life. We all are used to routine. We all have our routines. How many have a morning routine? 
We are, we are creatures of habits. I eat the same food every day. Every single day, I could eat a burrito from Chipotle every single day. You guys don't know about Chipotle, but it will bless your socks. It, it is Jesus experienced through culinary delights. It, it is fabulous. A little bit of guacamole. Mm. Ah, tremendous. Got the coffee in the morning. How many drink coffee in the morning? Three of you. Okay. How many do something in the morning at the same time every day? Use the bathroom or something, right? We all do something in the morning every day. Anybody go to the barber? Anybody, anybody use a barber? Good God almighty. No, no, nothing's working today. You want to mess somebody up? Go to the guy that you normally go to and tell him, I'm not going to you. I'm going to the guy next to you. You, you, you go to a different barber or someone, God forbid your barber is taken and you can't find your slot. You can't get your hair cut by the same person. It's over. How many sit in the same seat every Sunday? God forbid, you want to move of God? Sit in a different section in church. Watch God move. How many times have we, I know in my church, I don't know about the parking here. The parking here is terrible, by the way. <laughs> parking in my church is terrible. God forbid you park in someone's parking spot in church. <laughs> it's World War V. <laughs> it's, 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 it's over. Life is over as you know it. Why? Because we need routine. We need the same thing, same time, every day. You, I want to go to the restaurant where I just raise my hand and they say, I'll take the usual. Yes, bring you the usual. Everything. Everything the same. Everything the same. But what happens is we take that same approach and we bring it to our relationship with God. And as we continue to do the same thing over and over again, we sing three songs, we clap our hands, we sit down, we give in the offering, we stand up, we sing three songs, he prophesies, we slain, we speak in tongues, we preach again, we eat, we go home, we sleep, we pray. Just to wake up and do it all over again. That's good because it gets us in a routine. However, the contradiction or the truth that needs to be held in tension is if you continue doing a routine, you might miss the move of God for your life. So be careful, family. Be careful with the routine that you get into. Be careful. God is not looking for campers. He's looking for wide-eyed wanderers. He's looking for those that are not doing the normal thing, but are having their eyes open. Do you know the, you, you, does anyone, this is, this is going to sound terrible, okay, but just go with me on it. If you, if you ever wanted to jack up a blind person's life, not that you would want to, I'm just saying. If you wanted to, it's terrible, I know, I'm just, just digging it right now. If you wanted to jack up a blind person's life, rearrange their house. You wake up in the morning, right? One, two, turn. One, two, three, turn. One, two, coffee, good coffee. Turn around. One, two, three, four, door. Turn. Okay, done. You want to jack them up? Take the toilet and put it where the coffee belongs. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> you want to mess up a blind person? Rearrange their house because they got everything memorized. They have the routine. They know exactly where everything is. 
And unfortunately, spiritually, too often we find ourselves as blind men. Same thing over and over. I know what to do, when to do it, but God is saying, wait a minute. I am getting ready to do a new thing that no eye has seen, that no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the consciousness of men. The great things that I have in store, I'm doing it. Shall you not know it? It is even now it's springing forth. Now the wilderness are turning into rivers. Now it's happening. Do you know it? Do you know it? Hallelujah. Keep your eyes open. Because God is moving. God is doing a new thing. And we must have, this is, another, this is another conundrum that we have. It's another dichotomy that we must grapple with. We must have expectation, and I, I alluded to it previously. But the expectation cannot be on the process. It has to be on the principle. The expectation must be that God is going to do something, and I'm ready for it. But not expecting how he moved then. Understand what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's a tough position to be in because you have to believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Amen. You must have expectation. But what are you expecting? Focus and realign your expectation not to what he's done or what he, he is, or what you think he will do based on what, what he's, he's done. done. But, but focus, focus on, God, how are you going to do this this time? You did it like this last time, and that was great. You almost have to forget about what he did last time. Often, the greatest detriment to future success is past success. Because you know what worked last time, so you try to replicate the same product that you got from the process last time. But God is saying, no, you don't need to replicate, replicate that same process to get that same product. Know the principle. I am the principle, and I will give you a new process for a new product. Amen. It took four times for young Samuel to realize who was calling him. Three times he went to Eli, say yes, no, it wasn't me. Second time, yes sir, no, it wasn't me. The poor prophet couldn't even realize what was going on. The lamp had gone dim in those days. He was a blind prophet, dim-sighted prophet, couldn't even understand what the Lord was doing. Often, the Lord will use the things you're familiar with to bring you into a new place. He'll use the old, which you're familiar with, to bring you into something new. Moses had a stick in his hand. The Lord told him, when you go before Pharaoh, throw it down. It will turn into a serpent. He throws it down. Their magicians throw down their sticks. Serpents all on the floor. His serpent gobbles up the magician's serpent. Picks it back up by its tail, becomes a stick again. My God. He did a new thing with a new thing. But now that new thing became an established thing. He had it with him now. It was in his hand. See, God just doesn't do a new thing just so you can forget about it. He goes from glory to glory. From faith 
to faith, line upon line, precept upon precept. He builds the new things become established things to build upon for the next new thing. Amen. Stick on the ground, snake eats the snakes, picks the stick back up, walks around with it. Now it becomes a walking stick. Now years later, Moses is, is being chased by the Egyptian army. He he goes, as far as, he goes as far as he can go. Comes up against a mighty mass of water. He's stuck. He needs a new thing to happen in his life. He needs God to move in an incredible way. Something that no eye has seen, that no ear has heard. Hasn't even entered into the consciousness of Moses of what could possibly happen. God, what are you going to do? How are you going to get me out of this one? Have you ever prayed that prayer before? God, how are you getting me out of this one? I don't know. There's no way that I can do this. Moses hears the word of the Lord. The Lord says to him, what's in your hand? Moses possessed the process for the new thing already in his hand. What is in your hand, Moses? He says, I got this stick, this stick that turned to a serpent that I've been using as a walking stick. He's saying, well, now lift it up. He lifts it up. He takes an old, I'm, I'm sorry, he takes an established thing and he repurposes it. And he makes it and turns it into the new thing that's necessary for him. <laughs> Lifts it up, the stick that once was a serpent that became a walking stick now became a sea parter. He already possessed, let me tell you something, what you think you have a problem with, you already have the solution for. It's already inside you. The seed of deliverance is already within you. The seed of greatness is already within you. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? God does not make all new things. He makes all things new. God does not make all new things. He makes all things new. What's in your hand, Moses? He took a thing that was already established. Didn't create something else with, took what was already established and made it new. He did a new thing with an established thing. You understanding that this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. I want to I move on into, into what I believe is the climax of the new thing. And I'm almost done. Some of you know I'm lying. <laughs> I, I want to traverse lightly because I know there's a possibility that Pastor Adam has a word concerning this this particular passage of scripture. And I, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to completely destroy his text because it's very possible to destroy the text. <laughs> but what, 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 I want to, I want to show you this. I'm just going to gloss over it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go deep into it, because I believe that the word of the Lord is in Pastor Adam's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1, the Lord comes and he speaks to Jeremiah. He speaks to him after they had been in captivity. The backdrop of Jeremiah chapter 1 was Nebuchadnezzar had taken over. 
Daniel chapter 1. Nebuchadnezzar comes in. He takes all the pretty, all the handsome, all the smart, all those that are, are cunning in science and in wisdom, all those that can be trained to speak and stand before the king. He took all the popular kids and he understood that he can control the culture with the popular kids. Took them, he renamed them. And he was, he was looking to destroy a nation. Jeremiah hears a word from the Lord and he says, before I knew you, I already called you. I called you and I set you a prophet before nations. I sanctified you. That word knew is the same word. It means conception. When Adam knew Eve, when Abraham knew Sarah, in other words, the seed, what happens, what happens at conception? There's a seed that is implanted. The seed of greatness is already inside of you long before the problem ever arose. Long before the captivity ever happened. He said, before you were formed in the belly, I conceived greatness inside of you. I, I equipped you for the task that you're now experiencing. And Moses, uh, I'm sorry, and, 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 and Jeremiah says in verse 6, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Have you ever felt like that before? God, I can't do this. It's beyond me. It's beyond my ability. I have felt that many times in my experience, both as a father, even as a husband, and even as a pastor. Just being honest with you, I have been in moments where I'm saying, God, I can't do this. Much like Mary, Mary, Mary said the same thing in Luke chapter 1. The angel of the Lord came to her and she said, said that you're going to be the mother of the Messiah. And she says, how can these things be? Seeing as I know not a man. I don't have the qualifications in my own strength. I don't have the ability. I don't have the connections. I didn't get the degree everybody else got. I wasn't born with the same privilege as someone else was. How can this be? I'm just a child. I can't do this. Can I tell you something? The way that you know what you have been called to is by God is if it's out of your reach, it's within your calling. If it's out of your reach, it's within your call. If you, can't, if you can do it, you're doing the wrong thing. If you can fulfill the promise that you have from God in your own strength, that's not the promise of God. If you can do it by your own ingenuity, if you've got the anointing all by yourself, if you got your own talent and your own gifting to perform what you call the word of God over your life, it's a lie from the pit of hell. What God has called you, you are not able to fulfill in your own strength. As a matter of fact, it's your weakness that qualifies you for his strength. The Bible teaches us that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. So if you're feeling weak, if you're feeling weary, 
If you're feeling like you can't go on, if you're feeling like the breath has been taken out of your lungs and you can't stand another thing, guess what, baby? You are in the right season, in the right moment. God is getting ready to do a turnaround late in the midnight hour. God is going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. You're in the right place, in the right season, at the right time. Somebody say yes. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, I can't do it. But then something miraculous happened. And this is the, cul this is the culmination for me of where we are in this season for this conference. This is the culmination of all that Jeremiah had to do for God. But the Lord said unto me, Say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, verse 8, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Verse 9, this is it right here, this is it. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Can I tell you, the weapon that God is getting ready to unleash in this season over the forces of darkness is a people that have the word of the Lord in their mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. God didn't use a, 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 a bomb. God didn't use a military force. God didn't use ingenuity. What did he use? He used a man that had the word of the Lord in his mouth. And you later on, you see what the word is there for, to pull down, to uproot, to overthrow, and then to establish, to plant, and to build. That is what we are called to do. That, you want to know what the new thing God is doing? That's what he's doing. You want to know how he's doing it? He's doing it through you. He's doing it through you. When you speak, when you prophesy, when you declare, when you pray, when you begin to open your mouth and speak the word of the Lord that has been given to you, God is going to touch your mouth. It's not going to be your words. It's not going to be your anointing. It's not going to be your own ingenuity because you can't do it on your own. You can't do it by yourself. God knows you're weak. That's why he's going to use you. God knows your proclivity for sin. That's why he washed you in the blood. God knows exactly who you are and that's why you're qualified. Jesus does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. I'm so glad that I am weak. I'm so thankful for my iniquities. I'm so grateful that I can't do this all by myself because now that qualifies me to access a strength that is beyond me to access God, to use the word of God that he's put inside of me. I didn't do it. He put it inside of me so that I can declare to pull down the forces of darkness, to pull down destruction, that when I speak, depression has to go, that when I declare, sickness must leave, that when I declare, spirits of infirmity have to go, insanity must lift, depression breaks, addiction is broken, Broken. When I declare not my own words, but the word that was put on my mouth, I've been touched by the power of God. His hand was stretched out. His hand has been touched on my life. Like Isaiah, hot coals from the altar have been put on my lips. You've been branded 
You've been seared. You've been marked when you declare you are not your own. You've been given the power of attorney that when you speak in the name of Jesus, that at that name, every knee should bow and every tongue will confess. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. Principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, everything above the earth, everything below the earth, everything on the earth must bow its knee to a man, to a woman of God that declares the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. If you're ready to be the weapon God has called you to be, somebody make some noise in this house. Hallelujah. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are made new. There is a spiritual aligning that is happening. Your eyes are opening. You don't even realize it. But by the time this conference is over, I declare it by the spirit of prophecy. Things you were not able to see, you will begin to see. Demonic principalities that guise themselves as friends, you will see who they really are. You will see who really sent them. No longer will you be held back because of your association with men. Hear the word of the Lord. There, are, there is going to be a breaking away for some of you. A breaking away. There are going to be relationships that both are going to break away and new ones are going to be made. God is going to bring new people into your life. Why are relationships so important? Because everything that God does to you comes from a relationship. Your destiny is opened by the gatekeepers of your relationships. Doors of destiny are opened because of covenant relationships. Consequently, demonic relationships or those that are blocking you will not allow you into the pathways of righteousness that God has ordained for you. So things are happening. Two things are happening. The breaking away first. There will be a breaking away. And then there will be an establishing of a new. God is going to reveal it to you. He's going to show you. He's going to give you insight. He's going to give you revelation. Lift your hands. Revelation, the spirit of revelation, let it come. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened to the hope of the calling that is within you. You already possess it. You already possess everything you need to fulfill your assignment. Whatever you're facing, God has already put inside you the seed of greatness to overcome every obstacle. God knew. God knows exactly what you're going through. He knows the pain that you're going through. He knows the circumstance you're going through. He knows what you're facing. It's already inside you. And what is going to happen at the end of this conference, you are going to have an epiphany. You're going to realize Moses' rod is in your hand. You're going to realize you already have the solution. There is going to be a burning of your lips, a searing, 
Iniquity is purging. Sin is being dealt with. You will speak like you have never spoken before. You will declare like you have never declared before. Questions will be answered. You've been asking questions. Is it him? Is it her? Should I go into business now? Answers are coming to you, says the Lord. Answers are coming. Answers are coming. Even as the prophet received bread from the ravens, there are ravens that are coming to you. Divine opportunity from unlikely places. Divine opportunity from unlikely places. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing. Father, we repent now for focusing on your hand more than we have focused on your voice. And Lord, I thank you that eyes are going to see, ears are going to open, hearts are beginning to understand what you are doing in this moment, in this season, for this house and for this people. Father, I bless the word that was spoken. Lord, where my words have failed, I pray, Holy Ghost, you would come and fill the gaps. Father, Lord, if I missed it in any way that I said something I wasn't supposed to, I erase it in the name of Jesus. Only what you have spoken today, let it remain. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.